Hello everyone, back into today's video. Going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days. For today's video, that's going to take us to around the 18th of June. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. So we're around a couple of weeks. So I've got the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next uh, four weeks. That'll take us into the early part of July. Um, so we'll also have a very quick look at what's going on with Tropical Storm uh, Cristobal. It's now down to a tropical depression. So it's moving inland into the southern part of America. And uh, we'll see what the uh, National Hurricane Center uh, is uh, forecasting for this uh, storm over the next couple of days. Uh, but, but before I do anything else, I've got to say a big thank you to our latest uh, channel member. So we've got loads of channel members to get through, uh, actually. So everybody can get their own individual uh, video uh, where they get a mention. So I want to give everybody their own uh, individual shout out. So today uh, we're saying hello and thank you so much to Jamie. Thank you so much to Jamie for uh, becoming a Gazworthy's YouTube channel member. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Jamie, uh, for uh, for doing that. Uh, if you'd like to become a channel member for Gazworthy's, and all you need to do is come to the Gazworthy's YouTube homepage, click the join button, and you can find the join button with all of the uh, videos as well. Uh, click the join button, it'll take you to another page where you see what benefits you get for becoming a Gazworthy's YouTube channel member, and you can uh, sign up on that page uh, as well. If you can't see the join button, Few people have reported they can't on mobile and tablet devices. Then uh, all you need to do for work around is like a, a link in the description. It's relatively easy to uh, to uh, find the uh, link that takes you through to the join page, and then you can sign up and become a Gazelle's YouTube channel member. We had our first channel members live stream on Saturday, and uh, the channel members enjoyed it. So uh, you get a live stream once a month, and uh, currently the channel members are also getting uh, a advanced access access to the uh, winter 2020-2021 NAO forecast ahead of its global its global and international theatrical release on uh, Sunday, Sunday the 14th of June. We're going to put it out across all Gazworthy's platforms and uh, you'll all be able to get a look at it very, very uh, soon. So uh, thank you so much to all of our channel members. Thank you so much uh, to all patrons, all donors. It's absolutely fantastic the way you have supported uh, Gazworthy's over these past uh, few weeks. It's really amazing. Um, subscribers are going up uh, as well to the channel. If you aren't sub to the channel, then, then please uh, give us a sub. Uh, we're up to 6.7k now. It's just hovering around uh, 6,700 subscribers. Occasionally it ticks up a little bit above it. Occasionally it ticks down a little bit below it at the moment. But uh, we will soon clear definitively the uh, 6.7k uh, sub, uh, sub level. And then we're going to carry on going upwards, hopefully. So we're hoping to get 7,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. Not sure if we'll be able to quite pull that off by the end of the summer, but uh, certainly as we go into yours, anyway, we'll we'll be able to get to seven k, and uh, then we shall see where we go from there. Of course, the ultimate goal is to get to ten k, uh, really, but uh, <laughs> some time away, uh, I think. So seven k is like our next target. So big thank you to everybody for subscribing to the channel. A uh, big thank you uh, as well to uh, to all of our channel members, donors, uh, patrons, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic the way you responded to Gaz Webs is gradually coming out of, uh, of the lockdown. Things are getting better. The uh, the earnings with the advertisements, they're going upwards now uh, again. So uh, so we've, we've got through the worst, I think. And, uh, and it's down to the support that you have all given us. So just a huge, huge thank you to all of you uh, for the support that you have given to uh, Gazweb. It's over these past few weeks. And as I've been saying, I promise to you is that we're going to keep recording. We're going to keep uploading. We're going to keep live streaming. We're going to keep bringing you all of the content that you are enjoying. And uh, and we brought back old favourites. We've, uh, we've developed new features as well. Uh, new forecasts and videos and uh, yeah we're just going to keep on going and we're going to keep on pushing and uh, and uh, we'll we'll uh, carry on uh, bringing you the content that you're enjoying that's our promise to you for the support that you've given us thank you so much everybody uh, for uh, for doing that and of course special thank you to Jamie for becoming our uh, latest Gavs whether it's channel member right so this is the current position of now tropical depression Cristobal. So uh, Cristobal is uh, moving inland from the Gulf Coast of the United States. The uh, current situation 
is that uh, Chris Barr is giving maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour. So gusts probably going up to 50 or 60 mile an hour, still quite significant. Minimum central pressure of 994 millibars, and it's moving relatively quickly now at around 10 miles per hour, moving in a north to northwest direction. Uh, this is how Crystal Ball is forecast to develop over the next couple of days. So at the moment, uh, Crystal Ball is just there as a tropical depression. Uh, by the time we get through to uh, tomorrow, Crystal Ball is up to Illinois. Again, still as a tropical depression. And then moving into the far north of the states and off up to Canada as a uh, post-tropical storm getting up into uh, northern parts of Canada as we go through to the end of the week. I have a feeling that this is pushing so far northwards into Canada that uh, it is having an effect on the model output that we've been going through over the past few days. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, but over the past uh, few days, we've had so much chopping and changing uh, with the models. At one point, it looked like we was on course for a heat wave this week. Then they completely dropped that idea. We went off into a very unsettled uh, type uh, weather pattern. But they was forecast. So I think all of that chopping and changing has, has at least partly been down to uh, to this storm pushing so far north as into northern Canada and no doubt having an effect on the northern arm of uh, the jet. So uh, I suspect Cristobal does... Um, it is playing some uh, role, actually, in the uh, model uncertainty that uh, we've been going through. Right, coming back to home, this is how the central temperature uh, is looking. So the CET provisional up to yesterday, the 7th of June, is standing at 13.4. That's come down by around 3 degrees since the first day of the month, I think, first couple of days of the month. You remember, early on in the month, first day or so, uh, it was up in the 16s. Now it's down into the 13th. So that's a very, very significant drop in temperature that has taken place through this uh, first week of June from, from where we started off at right at the beginning of the month. We are now more or less around average for uh, for this point in June in terms of 61 to 990 average, probably a little bit below average even compared to 81 to 2010. That will probably carry on dropping more over the next few days. We may start to bring some warmer air in from the east at the end of the week. So later on in the week, over the coming weekend and probably into next week, that may start to tick up again. But so far, not looking like a particularly big deviation from average either way. These are the uh, um, the up. These are the uh, 500 millibar height on road charts from Penn State University for the next week to 10 days, and we've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is now in the absolute high pressure and low pressure have been moved around by the jet stream running above. Red extrapolates high pressure blue to low pressure. So uh, we can see that with it, it's taking us into week 10 day time frame, which does get us to around the 18th of June. We can see that the ECM has a stronger ridge actually to our east northeast as we go into 7 to 10 day time frame, which is bringing the wind in kind of like from a easterly to south easy direction. There's a cut off low to our south. That's a affecting Spain and some parts of France with big thunderstorms. That may threaten some heavy showers and storms to southern areas. But actually, by the day, sort of 8, 9, 10, looks like the ECM is probably going more towards higher pressure being in, in control, actually. So that's probably going into a drier and potentially very warm pattern. It is on a knife edge, though. We've got low pressure up here, south of Green. We've got low pressure down there. Uh, so, so this pattern is fraught with danger, really, if you want dry and fine weather, because it only takes this low pressure to be a little bit further north of this one to start undercutting the ridge, and, and then we can be in quite an unsettled pattern still. But around day 10, the ECM does look a little bit more settled. I'll show you, show you it in a moment. Uh, but GFS is similar, but the, the trough of low pressure is closer to us, and the ridge is pushed further north. So the high pressure is actually kind of like a northern blocking feature uh, with the GFS. And uh, as ever, with northern blocking in the summer, the danger is that you get low pressure setting up underneath it, you get a trough underneath it. And um, that's a classic, really, what the GFS is showing there. So uh, that is that's probably quite warm still, because the way the trough and the ridge are aligned, I suspect we're probably 
probably bringing in the air from like a southeasterly direction, but it's much more unsettled compared to uh, compared to the uh, the, the, um, ECM. The GFS is much more unsettled with low pressure, definitely uh, more or less over the country, just a little bit to our south southwest. But we would certainly expect a lot of heavy showers, if not longer spells of rain, with that. Uh, these have a GFS up rare temperature and precipitation ensemble, so next couple of weeks on a great Malvern uh, today. So if you'd like to have your local town or city featured within this part of the video, then uh, please let us know uh, either through the comments, or you can email us at gasofficegmail.com, or uh, ask us via our social media accounts. We're always very happy to feature your local town or city uh, within this part of the video. The red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Great Malvern. Uh, at the moment, we're below average. We've got a few more quite cool days coming up, although weather's actually a little bit a little bit quieter to today and tomorrow. So today and tomorrow, uh, we've got some drier weather. And when the sun's out, it's going to feel relatively warm and pleasant. But but actually, the upper air temperature is a bit below average. As we go through to the end of the week and into the weekend, temperatures then start to pick up. It becomes a lot warmer, both in terms of the upper air temperature level and also in terms of the uh, surface temperature level. Temperatures will lift up, particularly when the sun is out. And all humidity is going to increase as well. So it will become quite humid, it will become quite warm. Uh, but we can see from the precipitation spikes that there is going to be quite a lot of rain around as well. So in, in the next couple of days, actually, it's relatively dry. Not completely dry, but it's relatively dry in the next couple of days. But after that, it does look as though we've got increasing amounts of precipitation coming up as we move towards the middle of uh, June and possibly even uh, extending out into the second half of the month. That does look like quite a wet ensemble. These new um, ensemble charts at, uh, at West Central, they, they definitely do overplay the precipitation. So, so it probably won't be as wet as that is suggesting. Nevertheless, it does look certainly unsettled and at times there could be some big showers and uh, maybe some thunderstorms, maybe some torrential rain uh, as uh, as those upper air temperatures start to uh, lift up and, and it becomes generally warmer and more humid over the uh, end of the week and into the weekend. So that will be something to watch, the possibility of some really heavy showers and storms maybe over the weekend and maybe lasting into the early part of next week. Temperature anomalies from the 8th through to the 16th of June are going to be very close to or slightly below average. Northern uh, and northeastern parts of Europe are warmer than average. Really quite cool across France, Spain and Portugal. Significantly below average temperature anomalies there. And the precipitation anomaly overall a little bit on the wetter than average side. It's not going to be... Uh, a deluge uh, in terms of the anomaly, but uh, certainly a bit on the wet average side. And these charts may trend wetter actually over the next couple of days. Scandinavia looks very dry under a large ridge. This is for UK Met Office model. This one only goes out to 144 hours, but it's a good model, so I wanted to uh, start including this a lot more in the video. So this is how things look. UK Met on Thursday, trough of low pressure is dropping down through the country. That will be bringing. Uh, spells of rain and up to then temperatures will actually be very cool as well. It's as that low pressure uh, sort of sinks in towards the Bay of Biscay that we find winds going into the east of the northeast and we normally associate easterly winds with uh, with cool temperatures of course, especially so in winter uh, that's the wind direction where we get our beasts from the east of course but for this particular east northeast we are actually going to start dragging in really quite warm and humid air uh, from the east. So the low pressure sinks away to uh, the Bay of Biscay. Winds go into the east and to the northeast too. Uh, and that starts to bring warmer air in from the east. But we still keep this low pressure to our south. And so that low pressure could provide the energy, particularly as humidity is increasing. The heavy showers maybe longer spells of rain for southern areas, and possibly even some thunder. The driest, warmest weather in this pattern is in the north. It's wettest in the south, and, and the driest weather is in the north, particularly so for, like, western Scotland, somewhere like the Outer Hebrides, could be really warm and dry uh, as we go through to uh, the coming weekend. 
And up to 144 hours, which as far as we can go with a UK bet, we keep in this uh, sort of pattern. Low pressure to the south southwest, high pressure to the north northeast, big high pressure over Scandinavia, winds in from the east, and uh, quite humid, quite warm, quite muggy, but definitely the chance of big downpours, especially so for England and Wales. Driest weather, as I say, on this pattern is for the north. Um, we've got the uh, GFS, so of course this is the extended uh, model. This uh, started off on Thursday, again very similar to the UK Met. Low pressure is sinking through the country and moving away to south. High pressure building out to the northwest. Winds are turning into those east and north east. That's Friday again, bringing in this EC. Look how far back the EC goes. Imagine if that was uh, like 12th of December rather than 12th of June. Uh, the air is originating from an extremely long way east northeast. It's almost like a reverse zonal flow in a way. Um, so, uh, yes, a proper easterly and actually bringing in pretty warm air from the east uh, with this. As you pay attention for Saturday, for example, you see the plus 10 Celsius ice firm is pushing through the country. We're not all that far away from bringing uh, air that's quite close to 15 Celsius at 850 HPA across the North Sea. I suspect there's a lot of cloud coming in with this. So how, how much we actually realise the temperature potential will be interesting uh, to see. I expect it's going to be a lot of cloud. It'll be very humid and muggy with, uh, with spells of rain and heavy showers, maybe thunder coming and going. But if the sun does get, get through, if the sun does break through, then uh, I think the upper air temperatures there are enough to lift the temperature uh, to like, uh, like um, mid-20s, definitely, maybe even a little bit higher than that, depending again on sunshine amounts. Uh, so that's Sunday, again, high pressure is over Scandinavia, low pressure out to the southwest. Winds are in from an, uh, from an easy direction still, so it remains warm, humid, and big downpours are likely in the south. Again, messy upper air temperature shown, but it is a warm air mass that uh, we're bringing in from the east here. Whoops, just better answer the phone. Okay, sorry about that. Phone has been answered and uh, we're ready to carry on. So uh, there's always somebody dialing in to gaps, whether it's towers isn't there. But uh, never mind, we shall carry on. Right, so uh, we're up to Monday. High pressure with the GFS. Uh, high pressure to our northeast, low pressure to our southwest. Still in this sort of pattern of quite uh, unstable, warm, humid air. Could be some heavy showers breaking out. Moving up to uh, day 10, uh, low pressure starts to head in from off the Atlantic then. So we begin to lose that humid uh, easterly feel and we've started to pick up some fresher air from off the Atlantic, but still quite unsettled, still bringing uh, bands of rain in from the west. Into more extended range, this GFS run, we have a go at pulling up some quite hot air uh, from the south. We're sort of shifting everything round to the south, but it doesn't quite come off, and we keep the low pressure over and to the west of the country. Really, There's the upper air temperatures for the 21st of June showing, but uh, most of Europe looking really hot, actually. But we just stay in those cooler uh, west winds. Of course, with that, it don't take a very slight adjustment. Back this trough a little bit further west in the Atlantic, pull wind up from the south, and uh, we'd be off and running into a spell of hot weather. So we are quite close to turning a lot hotter in the third week of uh, June. Uh, on this uh, GFS run, but actually in terms of this run, uh, we just keep the uh, weather coming in from off the Atlantic. So the GFS is relatively unsettled now, up to like the, the 24th of June, although it does have a go at getting wind into the south. This is how the uh, GM is looking. So again, this low pressure is sinking through the country on Thursday, bringing quite a bit of rain with it. Then winds turning to the east, we start to pull this warmer, humid air in from the east, but still with low pressure to our south, so further showers, longer spells of rain from to Wales. Driest, warmest weather, as I've explained, will be in the north on this pattern. And then we move up into next week and uh, really just stays unsettled with the GM up to day 10. Further low pressure is uh, in business. Control of the weather. And then the ECM looks like that. So again, we've got the trough sinking through the country on Thursday. That's been showers or longer spells of rain with it. That low pressure sort of to our south southwest is going to weekend. Got these warm east southeasterly winds coming in, courtesy of the Scandinavian high. It all looks rather unstable. There could be showers breaking out, maybe suggestion of a bit of thunder too. There's the upper air temperatures, they look warm. 
air will be quite humid. So we've got an interesting weekend coming up in terms of, uh, of the weather. And then to the early part of next week, the ECM is a little bit different in that it's slightly more settled, as we saw on the uh, 500 millibar high dollar from Penn State University. The ECM is slightly more settled with uh, slightly higher pressure uh, close to the country. So probably going a bit drier and would still be uh, very warm through the course of next week. But we've already established the other models are actually a lot more unsettled for next week too. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So the next couple of days, we're just looking at a few scattered showers. Not much uh, going on, quite a couple of days. Our next sort of proper batch of rain is uh, coming in on Wednesday. It turns quite wet across many parts of the country through Wednesday. And then into Thursday and Friday, of course, then we're shifting wind into the east. We start to bring in these warmer easterly winds uh, and increasing the humidity. So then we have heavy showers, longer spells of rain in the south, some thunder maybe for northern England there. Detail on this is to be determined. It's a very complicated and unusual weather pattern for the end of the week and into the weekend. So where these heavy showers and spells of rain, possibly thunderstorms are, uh, will have to be firmed up on as we go through the next few days. But expect some places to get very wet. Other places will probably not have too much rain in this pattern. It'll be a little bit hit and miss. Uh, into next week, the ECM then starts to kill off the rain a little bit, although it's quite wet in the north there uh, around the 16th of June. But uh, overall, looks like we go a little bit drier uh, than some of the other models are suggesting anyway uh, through next week. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. This gets us to the 18th of June. Uh, so two um, options. We have 30 members of the ECM ensembles that look like this. They have high pressure to our northeast and low pressure to our southwest. It's warm with this and humid, but possibly a bit volatile. No pressure to the southwest could provide uh, heavy showers and thunderstorms, particularly in combination with the uh, humidity rising. And then we have 21 members of the ECM ensembles, which does include the operational run, but it's more anti-cyclonic. The trough of low pressure is pushed further south. The high pressure is over Scandinavia and ridging to another high in the Atlantic. As is also, of course, jet streams pushed northwards. So, so that's a drier, warmer option, uh, or it's a drier option anyway. Both options are probably going to be quite warm, but it is a drier option as pressure is higher. However, what you need to keep in mind, it does include the operational run, uh, but it's a minority option, 21 one going for that uh, against 30 uh, that are going for this uh, particular option just here. Uh, now the way this evolves over the next few days as you'll see is that uh, that trough of low pressure kind of uh, clears away and as we run up towards two weeks we just start to generally begin to build pressure really. So, so this is how it looks as we get to uh, 23rd of June. Uh, with the ECM ensembles, and generally just quite a large ridge being suggested there, I think. So uh, so the ECM ensembles are still sort of sticking with this idea that uh, that we're likely to start moving towards higher pressure, I think, as we go uh, as we go further on into June. Uh, finally, just have a look at CFSV2. So these are 500 millibar heights, so they break it down into weekly periods. The first weekly period will take us from the 8th to the 14th of June. The uh, coming week has high pressure to our northeast and also to our west. Low pressure is to the south. Winds are in from an easterly direction. So it's uh, it's going to be quite unsettled. And uh, eventually, after a cool start, it will begin to get warmer on those easterlies as well. Week 2 is the 15th to 21st of June with high pressure over Scandinavia. Low pressure is to our southwest. Winds are in from an east to southeasterly direction. Warm and humid. Uh, but with the low pressure from southwest, of course, it could be a bit thundery, especially for more southern and western parts of the country. Driest, warmest weather is in the north. Week three is the 22nd to the 28th of June. Then we've got high pressure over Scandinavia. Low pressure is to our south. Winds again are uh, in from the east. That's perhaps turning a little bit drier in more southern areas as the low pressure is clearing away to the south. And by the time we get through to week four, uh, we're up to the 29th of June to the 5th of July. High pressure then is taking over to our east. So the high pressure is centred like Denmark and, uh, and southern Sweden. And that will be bringing in a proper easterly then with low pressure out to our west and away to the south. That could be setting up the sort of pattern that would be conducive to a hot spell. 
maybe as we come to the end of uh, June and the beginning of July. That could be our first sort of summer heat wave getting going. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead with CFSV2, the 8th to 14th of June, are uh, below average. But week two goes warmer than average. That's as we bring in those warmer easterlies, of course. It's 15th, 21st of June, that's a warmer than average week. Uh, 22nd uh, to 28th of June, that one is also warmer than average as well. And perhaps looking really quite hot as we get through to week four. It's the 29th of June to the 5th of July, significantly above average. So quite cool in the next few days. But once, that, once that's out of the way, it does look as though temperatures could be lifting up as we go through uh, through June. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, precipitation. So uh, week one, 8, 8 to the 14th of June, near normal. Precipitation for England and Wales, a bit drier than average in the north. Wetter than average in week two, so warm and wet, 15th, 21st of June, warm, wet week particularly for England and Wales, where it could be thundery. Week three is near normal for uh, precipitation, perhaps no signal. And again, week four is also near normal for precipitation. It's 29th of June to 5th of July, near normal. But I would think by this point, probably edging towards the drier of an average side of things, if anything. So, so yes, we've still got unsettled weather to come. We've got quite a bit more rain on the way. Some of it could be thundery as temperatures become warmer and more humid uh, over weekend and into next week. Beyond that, the suggestion is definitely still there, but the further on into June we're going, uh, the warmer and uh, drier it could be getting. So, uh, so June could be one of those months that does get drier and hotter as it progresses. We shall see. Tomorrow we're going to have the ECMDF 30-day look ahead. And we'll have uh, a regular week 10 video update as, as well. So uh, come back for all of tomorrow's videos then. For this video though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.